I heard you, okay? I heard you. There's a new chirp in town, chirp next. And it changes the process that we've been using to program not just Balfang radios, but pretty much every amateur radio that chirp knows how to talk to. So today, I'm going to show you the new process for programming your radio with Chirp Next. Let's get started. started with this, let me get a couple of things out of the way. All the jokes, new Chirp, who dis, Chirp is dead, long live Chirp. All right, now that we got that out of the way, interfacing your computer with your Baofeng is still going to be the same. I highly recommend you go get an FTDI chip programming cable. Link is in the description on Amazon. Or get yourself a DigiRig. DigiRig is a really cool interfacing tool that not only allows you to do programming, uh, it does USB-C to your computer, and then has a port for serial and audio, so you can do more than just program your radio. You can also do things like WinLink, APRS, and whatnot with this device. So link in the description for this as well, so check it out. Make sure you have your radio connected to your computer. You should probably do that before running Chirp for the first time, if this is your first time running Chirp. That's always been my way of doing it. Let's take a look. If you just search Chirp in Google, you're going to see something that says danplanet.com chirp colon home that's the one you want click on that and then if you look at the top there it's going to say get it we'll go ahead and click get it link in the description for Dan Planet. Now we're looking specifically at Chirp Next. Chirp Legacy is the old version. There's nothing wrong with the legacy version. It's fine if you want to continue using it, but all the new upgrades for new radios and whatnot will be under Chirp Next. So click on download the latest Chirp Next build here. Now it should be smart enough to know that you're on Windows, so it's going to identify that as green. And I've tested this with Linux and Mac OS, and it should say, oh, you're on a Mac, here's the green link for whatever it is you're running. In my case, we're going to download the Windows installer here. And I'm just going to throw it onto my Downloads folder, click Save. It should start downloading. And then just run the installer. All right, so the installer here, if you click it after downloading, it's just going to ask you to agree to the license agreement. Hit Install. Now, after doing the install, if you have already have an older version of Chirp, I found that it, it does supersede the old one, but if you are not, um, if you're showing the old one, so you can go ahead and delete the old one. You're not really going to lose anything because Chirp is looking at the files you save for your radio, not necessarily which system created it. The files are going to pass over between the different versions of Chirp, so there shouldn't be any kind of compatibility errors. So let's finish it. That's all there is to it. Let's run Chirp. All right, so here is the new Chirp Next window. It's similar but also different. You see how it says get started by either opening a file, meaning a radio programming file, or downloading a radio from the radio menu. So it wants you specifically to do one of those things, either edit a file you've already worked on, or saved off of another radio, or download from radio. This is very similar to the old way, but I'll tell you where we start to shift. I think it's important to start with one of the most frequently asked questions that I get when it comes to programming your Baofeng, and that is, which radio slash computer port do you select when you actually are in the Chirp program? Well, let me show you the secret to this. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to click the Windows key. It's the left corner of the keyboard if you're on Windows. Click the Windows key and start typing in Device Space Manager. Go ahead and run the device manager application and you're going to see something like this window here. This is your device manager. It tells you the devices that are connected to your computer. And I have one of the options expanded as it's called. I've clicked this little arrow to expand it. I'm going to plug in my Baofeng programming port and you should see a new record appear here. And that's the port you're going to use. It's that simple. Let's watch the magic happen live. It's going to refresh there, and sure enough, we've got a new port, this COM14. It's the same name, and that's where it gets confusing sometimes, is you may have similar devices plugged into your computer, but if you don't know this specific COM port, all this is going to be really complicated. So I got my Baofeng connected. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to crank the volume all the way up. So let's go back to Chirp. We're going to click on Radio, Download from Radio. We now know that we're going to use COM14, which I've already selected. And we're going to go on a Baofeng GT5R in this case. right? That's the radio that we're going to connect to. You'll note, though, if you go to Vendor, look how many vendors are supported now. ID51 plus, plus 2, 
the 5100. There is just a ton of different radios. Let's see. All right, back to Baofeng. Let's click on Baofeng. We're going to go to the GT5R, and I'm going to click OK and watch my screen here. And there you go. You can see that red light means that it's recording off of the radio. So we should see something happen right now. All right, so here is the records that the computer pulled from my radio. These are the memory settings. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, let's pretend like we're making a brand new program for the radio. And so if it was a brand new radio and you had no programming on it, I'm going to click zero, the zero bar right here, and I'm going to shift, I'm going to hold shift down, I'm going to click 25, selecting all the records. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say delete, and I'm going to shift all up. You don't necessarily have to do that, but that becomes important later. I generally just have it shift all click all up. Boom, we just blew up the whole thing. So now my, my radio has nothing on it. It's, it's, a, it's an empty vessel for us to load. Well, Chirp makes it a little bit easy to get started. There's a couple of pre-canned frequencies that it has available that you can go ahead and use. And let's explore some of those right now. So we're going to go to File, Open Stock Config, and here's a whole list of frequencies. Now, a lot of these are not amateur radio frequencies. So you may not want to use them on your radio. For instance, GMRS, FRS. I'm not going to rehash that whole argument. Go look at my video that I'll link you here. Let's start with something easy. We'll go to the US calling frequencies.csv. And this is the big change to the workflow in Chirp. Click that. We get a new tab. So here's my radio, my GT5R. And there's the US calling frequencies tab. New tab. We've got four options here. We've got a six meter call, a two meter call, a 220 call, and a 70 centimeter call. Well, we're on a Baofeng in this example, and Baofengs only have 70 centimeters and two meters. So we can omit the other two. I don't want to drag those over to my Baofeng programming file. So how do I do that? Well, I already have the 70 centimeter selected here. I'm going to hold down control. And I'm going to select the two meter call record. Now we have two records. And I'm going to then go hold down control and click C for copy. Control C. I'm going to go back to the GT5R. I'm going to click it. Now I'm going to click it record zero. See at the very top, I'm going to click on zero and then hit control V. And we just paste it in two records. That's the whole process. We're just going to multiply that by pulling and querying from different sources. Let's grab another canned frequency set. Let's now pull from the NOAA weather alert.csv. New tab gets created. I'm just going to take all the 1 through 10 by clicking on 1, record 1 right here. I'm going to hold down shift this time and click 10. That selects all the records. Now, control copy, control C, go back to my Baofeng control and I'm going to click on 2, record 2. And I'm going to hit control V. Now, this is a good thing, this warning that came up. What's this warning say? Some memories are incompatible with this radio. And it's going to do the right thing to make it compatible, or at least lawful. So what it's going to do is it's going to turn duplexing off on that memory station. What that means is that your radio won't be able to transmit on the NOAA frequencies. This is a good thing. You don't want NOAA coming after you. But go ahead and hit OK. And now look, the record for duplex for all the weather stations is now set to off. By the way, that is your shortcut to making any frequency non-transmit on a Baofeng or any other radio you're programming in Chirp. So if this is a first responders frequency, for instance, and you just want to monitor it, make sure you set the duplex to off. There's something else I'm going to do, though. I don't want any of these weather stations to come up when I'm doing a scan. I know the weather frequencies work and they're always transmitting and I can generally always hear them. So unless I want to listen to weather radio, I don't want my scanning to stop there. I've clicked two and then I've shift click on 11. I'm gonna right click somewhere in the selected area and I'm gonna hit properties. This is going to give me editing details on the 10 memories I've selected. So to enable skip, if you go down here to the skip record, select it by clicking once with the left click, click the drop down arrow, and then click S. Anytime an S shows up on your record now, it will be skipped by the scanning function. Hit the OK button, and now you can see we've added an S to every one of these. 
Okay, so far so good. Let's add some more records. This time I want to add some repeaters. Let's talk about what you can do to add repeaters. Click on radio, click on carry source, then you have three options, radioreference.com, repeater book, and DMR mark. A Baofeng is an FM only analog radio, so we're going to leave DMR alone for right now. The two options that remained, RadioReference.com, for instance, is a subscription service. So given that RadioReference.com is a subscription service, although I recommend it, one of the values that it has for you is you can actually query by your zip code and you can adjust how far out of your zip code you want to view at any one time. That works pretty well. So I'm not really against you trying it, but if um, you don't really have a need for that, and I can show you ways that we can work around that with Repeater Book. You don't really need it. But let's go to Repeater Book. Let's bring that up. New window pops up here. Now, this is a, a fairly straightforward window, but there's a couple of really powerful options, so pay attention here. We're going to select the country as United States. Obviously, if you're going to be in a different state, you're going to want to change that to the appropriate state that you're in. Now, I have uh, gone ahead and selected and added a lat long uh, for my general location. And I've set the distance to 50 miles. OK, that is going to take the center of that lat long and just in an increasing radius add to 50 miles. So any repeater that falls in that 50 mile radius will be a part of the query list that we'll see when we click OK. But there's more you can do here. So here we go. We want to also check the box for limit bands because, again, a Baofeng is a 2 meter and 70 centimeter only radio. There's no point in playing around with 6 meters or 1.25 meters or anything else. So we're just going to check the boxes for 70 centimeters and 2 meters, and we'll hit OK. The checkbox is now enabled. We're going to do the same thing with limit modes. Check the box, make sure we have FM selected here, and hit OK. So we're saying search for California at this lat long and I want all the repeaters that fit within that 50 mile radius and I only want two meters and I own two meters 70 centimeters and I only want FM let's see what happens hit OK boom really fast we get a bunch of decent records and a new tab this one says repeater book okay so I'm not gonna mess around with some of these let's just for example just randomly hold down control and click around so now I've got I don't know, six, seven or so records that I want to copy into my new Baofeng programming file. So I'm going to hold Control, hit C for copy. I'm going to go back to my Baofeng here, the first record. I'm going to hit the next open record, which is 12, and I'm going to Control V to paste. It's removed all the blank records. It's filled them in from 12 to now 18, and our next open slot is 19. Let's go back to repeater book here. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this. I want to rerun the query. I could leave the tab open, but you're free to close the clear out space as well. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I'm going to close the NOAA and the calling frequencies. So now I'm just showing my current programming list that's going to go back onto my Baofeng. Let's go back to radio, query source, repeater book. This time I'm going to get rid of the lat long and the distance, and I'm going to add orange and let me show you why i'm going to hit orange in here i'm going to limit it to two meters and 70 centimeters like before i'm going to make it fm only and i'm going to hit ok so what i've done here is by adding orange it's going to look at all the records in the comment field for anything that says orange the reason i'm doing that is orange county california which is the county that's just right next to me here so santiago peak is a repeater group all on Santiago Peak that I often like to have in my radio. I can generally hit them wherever I'm at here in the South Bay of California. So I'm going to go ahead and select those by just clicking once and then shift clicking. Signal Peak's also pretty good. Here's another couple from Santiago. Uh, I saw Knott's Berry Farm. I'm going to control click that as well. And so I can just go through here and keep adding more records as I like. Now, same thing, now that I've got them selected, the magic keys, I'm going to control copy, go back to my Baofeng, click the next open record, which is 19, and control V to paste. And there you go. Now, here's the last thing to know. What if you get provided some kind of repeater record for a repeater you want to just manually 
type into Chirp. That's pretty easy too. Let's make believe that I've got a repeater at my house and I'm letting you connect to it. So let's say it's at 448.6400. And I am KI6NAZ. You're typing this in yourself. Now, um, I'm telling you that I use PL tones or CTCSS tones for you to activate the repeater when you're transmitting into it. So to do that on Chirp, you're going to use tone. Select tone. And I have 88.5, just the first tone as the selected option. If you wanted to, you can change this to whatever, but I told you it's 88.5. So that's what you're going to leave. Now, there is other squelch types like tone squelch, T squelch, DTCSS, crossband, if you're going to do crossband repeater and that kind of stuff. But no, I said PL tone. So if you hear PL tone or CTCSS or whatever, that's interchangeable in Chirp as tone. That's what you're going to select. Now, you can skip all the way to the other side here where duplex is. Now, the duplex is telling you what your offset is going to be. You're either going to duplex up or you're going to duplex down. In my case, though, I like to keep it simple. I keep it at negative, so duplex down, and it's a offset of five. Standard UHF across the board. The type is FM, not narrow, just regular FM. Now, for you, it's going to take you a little bit more power to get to my repeater. So you may want to leave it at high. However, for me, since I'm at my home, I'm just going to go ahead and set that to low most of the time because I don't need the extra power to get out because it's literally at my home. So this is the KI6NAZ home repeater. And there's my new record that I just created. And that can get folded into my upload when I choose to do so. So now I have a decent programming list that I may want to update or upload to my radio to start playing around with. But last thing to do, there's a couple of settings that I recommend you add to your Baofeng. So if you go to the top there, right below the tab, it says settings. Click on settings. This is your radio configuration. So instead of going to that menu and diving through on your hands, manually programming it, you can just use Chirp to play around with this stuff. Under basic settings, I like to have a name as display mode B. That's literally going to give you the name of what that channel memory slot is called. I like this on channel B so that I can potentially go to the same memory channels on A and B, and I can see the frequency that it is and the name that I put it as. Oftentimes that's a call sign, or in this case, Knott's Berry Farm, right, on that last example. If you wanted to, you can change the LED colors of the radio. I don't mess around with that. If you're a fan of Not a Rubicon, you Boof can wang. add the Roger Beep right here by clicking that on. Under Advanced, I don't really do anything here um, except for possibly play around with the Vox uh, sensitivity. I've found that off is off and then one through 10 doesn't do a whole lot. So if you can't make Vox work very well with a one or two, it's oftentimes when I'm playing around with digital interfaces that I do this and one is generally good enough. So I leave that to off most of the time. Some people like dual watch. I have used it both ways. I, I don't really care either way. Dual watch transmit priority, I always have that off. I don't mess around with that. And the rest of them I kind of leave alone. I will change things depending on what my what kind of setup I'm going for, but most of the time you, you can almost just run it stock and it's completely fine. FM radio preset, I do have this set to 91.5. If you are in Southern California, then that's KUSC, classical music. Not classic rock, actually classical music. I like classic rock, but anyway. So let's go ahead and upload this. And if you know you want to monkey around with this stuff and, and explore, experiment, feel free. It's your radio. You're programming it. Have fun with it. And if you run into trouble, just do a factory reset on the radio, bring up the file here on Chirp and reload it, make some changes, reload it to the radio. You're not going to hurt anything. Don't worry about it. Any, any, I guess even if you did, what is it, a $25 radio? No big deal. Radio, click on radio here. We're going to go to upload to radio. And the port number should already be selected. And vendor and GT5R are grayed out because this file came off of that radio. So now we just click OK. And yep, green means we're uploading. So that's what that's doing right there. Hopefully you see that okay. Green screen's kind of messing with this, but it's uploading right now to this radio. All right, we have completed. It did a full reset.
There's that Knott's Berry Farm repeater. Two, eight. All right, let's test another one here. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Just checking if I can hit the repeater. We got it. All right. Hey, guess what? That's pretty much the foundation of all radio programming. So if you can do what I just did, then adding capabilities to this, even going so far as to picking up learning how to do DMR, is really just a couple steps away from this. So I hope this helps. I hope this gives you the confidence to go out and try this on your own because trust me, it's not that hard, particularly with the new Chirp Next software. I feel like it, it has the same great functionality it had before. It's still every bit as effective, but I think it's a little bit easier to wrap your hands around it and learn how it works. So I think that this change is not that bad. It truly is a change though. We're changing the whole process that we used to do, but it is a little bit less fiddly. I feel like there isn't so much of this remembering how to control that floating window that used to be there and you kind of just need to copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste the stuff that you want and ignore the stuff you don't care about. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let me know your thoughts though in the comments below. Chirp's been around for a really long time and at this point it's become a pretty solid application. It's available on most things so there's no reason not to try this, particularly if you've got one of these Baofeng radios. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to know more about amateur radio. Thanks a lot for watching. 73.